I believe we are now live. And yay. Um, yay, yay. Hi, everybody. Please put where you're from in the chat. And um, let me go ahead and introduce our wonderful speaker, Michelle Hicks. Michelle is um, a former reporter. She's a storyteller at heart. She spent the last 20 years as a communication consultant and trusted advisor to Fortune 500 companies, helping them attract and engage their workforce. Today, she leads communications for Micron's DEI team, helping more than, more than 40,000 40, team members feel seen, heard, valued, and respected. And for this, that, that's a lot, that's a big number. Um, I am going to turn this over to Michelle. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you, Laura. It is such a pleasure to be here. And I want to say welcome. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. As Laura just said, I um, am with the uh, DEI team at Micron Technology. My pronouns are she and her. And yes, I am very blessed to get to promote in diversity, equality, and inclusion among our team members at all the locations where we work, all the communities of those locations where we work all around the world. And I'm here today to talk a bit about building a community of allies, which is something we've been very focused on at Micron. Because in diversity and inclusion programs, allies really give a voice to the voiceless and they demonstrate that empathy and other behaviors that we really need to see to create cultures of inclusion. Today, I hope to share some insight about why it is an imperative for businesses to be making allyship a part of your organization's DNA and to create a culture where everyone belongs and where everyone succeeds. Next slide. Before I get started, I'm going to share just a little bit with you about Micron to kind of put some perspective around it. I know we just shared we've got 40,000 team members. We actually work in 17 different countries around the world, and 70% of our workforce is in Asia. Micron is the fourth largest semiconductor company in the world. We make memory and storage and accelerator hardware and solutions that are really the living heart of computing. So just as the Into the Awesome conference touts that it's going to feature the best speakers that you've probably never heard from, Micron's kind of like that too. You've probably never heard of us, but our memory powers everything that you do from the moment you wake up until your head hits the pillow at night. Whether you are um, using your cell phone and storing phone numbers and addresses and different things like that, or even the sensors in your automobile, uh, there's a really good chance that you have used Micron products and not even known it. Next slide. Here um, is just a quick picture of our global footprint. Like I said, 17 countries, more than 40,000 um, plus workforce, um, majority of the workforce in Asia. Um, it is because of this uh, global footprint and, and lots of other reasons in the world that we we really feel like we need to be making um, not only diversity, but inclusion an, an important part of our business because we want to encourage people to feel psychological safety. We want them to be bold. We want them to take risks because that's the kind of behavior that's gonna drive our innovation forward. Our vision at Micron is to transform how the world uses information to enrich life for all. And for all is a major um, uh, pillar that, that we, um, everything that we approach is, is based around that concept. Next slide. Um, but what's interesting is that this is a new concept for us, right? Micron um, hasn't always focused on diversity and inclusion in the 40 years that we've been around. But when our leaders recognized this imperative in our changing world, they put our team together in DEI just two years ago. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is create a workplace where our team members are seen, heard, valued, ideas and it's ideas that make our customers happy laura did you have a question you got very very choppy and i'm not sure that that part came through could you let us know in the chat if you heard all of that because i didn't hear any of it yeah we oh, missed no. that part it's okay, got to well, get choppy just, again can you hear me now 
Yes, but I do also have the symbol on you now, and I didn't have it before. So let's let's hope that it goes. There, it's full green now. Go. Woohoo! We haven't always focused on diversity, equality, and inclusion at Micron. Our team in DEI is only two years old, but when our leaders realized the business imperative of um, creating a more inclusive workforce. Um, that's, that's when they brought our team together. We really want to create an environment where all of our team members are seen, heard, valued, and respected. Because when people feel safe about being who they are, when they walk in the door physically or whether they're logging in and, and working from home virtually, that's when they um, can really bring their best ideas, their full selves to work and create those innovative ideas that make our customers so happy. Next slide. So let's pause for a moment to talk about why inclusion is so important. I've, I've made that statement, I've made that assumption, but I think it's a good exercise to just kind of think about it in our own lives. I use this image of an in-group and an out person in school because I don't know about you, but even as a 50 something grown woman, when I experience being left out, I feel just like that little kid in the picture with their head down who's sitting alone. I know exactly how that feels. And what I want to ask you is, how do you feel when you've been left out? Um, maybe we could get you to put some of your comments in the chat and, and just talk a little bit about what that feeling is. Any taker, anyone? Ah, uh, thank you, got it, exactly. Thank you, John, that is that is a true feeling. Nervous, not sure what to say or do. Heart hurts and feels sad, feel very isolated. It's harder to learn and it's hard to build, build empathy with others when you feel left out. And I just find that personally, I'm less, less confident in sharing my ideas. So I may have a really great idea, but I may not articulate it effectively if I'm not feeling, if I'm not feeling the confidence because I think perhaps I'm being judged or, or something like that. So those are all, thank you all for sharing um, because I just think that that is definitely um, an important, I, I think we can all relate to that, that feeling and, and it helps to kind of take some of these DEI issues that are sometimes, thought about in they're sometimes politicized or, or other things are happening with them when really at Micron and I think with a lot of organizations, our real intention is to just be good human beings, to just help everybody feel included. So we can go ahead and go to the next slide and talk a little bit about the science of inclusion. Because the bottom line, as we've all expressed, when you feel like you're being left out, not only does it not feel good, but it really triggers some kind of, you know, really, um, you know, natural responses in, in us that are that are not positive. We have, as human beings, a real biological need to belong. We want to feel included. We want to feel supported and valued by others socially. And what's so interesting is that our brain processes these social threats like physical threats. So our capacity to make decisions to solve problems, to collaborate with others is reduced when we're feeling that threat response. In other words, if employees in your organization don't have a sense of psychological safety, they are not gonna be performing at their best and none of us can afford to have that happen. Let's go to the next slide. Our differences are what can contribute to these in and out groups and I share this uh, slide of the iceberg with the different diversity dimensions. If you've um, been looking into DEI issues at all, you may have seen this image before. But what it shows is that some of our differences are visible and some of them are invisible. For example, you can look at me and you can tell that I present as female. Um, that's above the waterline and that's obvious for everybody to see. But below the watermark, what you can't see my sexual orientation, my religious affiliations, whether I have depression or some kind of other anxiety or other kinds of issues, and the language that I use to describe who I am and how I want to label my identity. Although at the top of this presentation, I did share with you um, what my pronouns are. See, what I wanted to do was try to help make what is invisible more visible. 
This image is used by the diversity and inclusion author Mary Frances Winters to point out that we are not all the same. We all have diversity dimensions which frame our experiences. And unfortunately in our society, those differences can result in very different experiences in the world and at work. If we fear society or our work culture won't be accepting of our differences, we cover them up. Excuse me. <coughs> because we have experienced what that kid experienced in that picture, the feeling of not belonging when we show our true selves. Next slide. One important way organizations can help the people in their workplace create a culture of belonging and inclusion is to acknowledge the differences and the systemic privileges for some members of our society that other members don't share. Privilege is related to power, and it can be identified by one's status of membership in a particular social group like ability, class, education, sexual orientation, gender, or others. Excuse me. There, that's better. And having privilege doesn't mean you live a life free of hardships. You can be simultaneously privileged and disadvantaged in different aspects. For example, I live in the United States, and in my society's culture, people of privilege tend to be white, male, and straight. That describes my husband, but he also grew up in a single parent home, and he experienced the hardship of poverty growing up. Now, during his childhood, he had a good friend who was black and who would get bullied at school. He stood up to those bullies, and when he did, <clears throat> he acted as an ally to his friend. So you see, an ally is a person who uses their privilege, in this case, my husband's white skin, to ad advocate on behalf of someone else, his friend of color, who didn't hold that same privilege. And the reason I call my husband an ally in this situation is because allies are really defined by their actions. Allies advocate for and support underrepresented people and communities. Being an active ally is something that is ongoing, it is intentional, and it is a series of actions we all must commit to continuously work on. We all have the ability to be an ally because our privilege is intersectional. As I explained with my husband, while he did not have economic privilege, he had racial privilege that he could use to be an ally to his friend of color. Next slide. Oops, oh. <laughs> there's the privilege part, it was hiding. Yeah. Well, um, we'll just keep talking about allyship because at Micron, we are working to build a community of allies by requiring all of our employees to participate in inclusive ally training. And during that training, we explain that an ally strives to confront their own prejudices, to engage in the process of change and of developing a culture that is free of phobia, of discrimination, and of microaggressions. Allies recognize their mistakes, but they don't use them as an excuse for inaction. Allies are responsible for empowering their role in a community, particularly as it relates to responding to human rights, injustice, and inequity. Allies recognize the legal power and privileges that they have and that other people are denied. And allies commit themselves to personal growth in spite of the discomfort it may sometimes cause. Allies should find comfort within their discomfort. And at Micron, we call this having a growth mindset. And I'll pause just really quickly to explain something that's happening in real time. You know, this afternoon, there is the expectation that Derek Chauvin, the police officer who was convicted of killing George Floyd, is expected to be um, sentenced this afternoon. And one of the conversations that we're having in our um, among our team and with our crisis team and some others and some other groups is um, how do we how do we stand up as an ally um, in response to that verdict? So that's just an example of not only our individuals allies, but entire organizations can be allies as well. Next slide. So one of the most powerful aspects of, of our inclusive ally training is the use of storytelling. 
And so what we have done as we developed our inclusive ally training curriculum is we partnered with all nine of Micron's ERGs to have them develop this curriculum where, yes, they help under, they help dive a lot deeper than what we talked about today about what is privilege. They dive a lot deeper into what is an ally and, and help um, to kind of have that conversation. But they also then share their personal stories and talk about their personal experiences. So a member of the Black Employee Network may share a story about what their experience and how it felt for them when they were driving in a um, more expensive neighborhood and got pulled over by a police officer, even if it happened to be the neighborhood where their home exists. Or we might hear a story from um, our capable community who talks about um, a situation where um, they weren't able to get access. Um, there were no ramps to help them get up um, the stairs or get up into another room and the, how those accessibility issues have impacted their, their lives and their ability even to do their work. So we hear from real people. We let them share their stories because, again, as I said a little bit earlier, to us, this is just a human rights issue. These are just human rights issues. We just want to help create understanding because when you're not, you haven't walked in someone else's shoes, you may not even be aware that there are those different, different challenges that they could be facing. And so what I'd like to do next is, um, if we go to the next slide, um, have us take a listen to what some of that storytelling is like. Laura, if you can try to play that video. Could you hear that sound? I cannot. Um, are you sharing the sound on your machine? I'm not 100% sure how to do that. <laughs> um, Would you like me to try to take over? Yes, I'm going to stop sharing and you try. OK, thank you. Yay, technology. <laughs> Okay. I'm getting. <laughs> Let me know if you can see my screen. I see the circle. I, yeah, you've got the icon again, but it's back. It went back to green. So hopefully it'll load. I don't see your screen yet. Here it comes. Excellent. Let's play this video. You are a little choppy right this second. Give it a moment to buffer. So being at Micron back in the earlier days definitely was not the most inclusive company that we are today. I really wanted to be normal like everybody else. I didn't want to be stigmatized as somebody different. And at that time, my English was very bad. So uh, I felt really outside in because I didn't understand what the people were saying. Well, coming in from India to the US as a foreign student uh, was certainly quite challenging for the first few months for me. Those days, early days were hard because I was totally an outsider. I Went to the bathroom one day and I'm coming out of the bathroom this person. And I know there are a lot of people of color that works in the janitorial department. And I felt in a way that I was stereotyped in that way. It's like, you know, I was a janitor and nothing else. I was once told I was using the wrong restroom because as someone who was gay, I shouldn't be using the men's room. I remember one time I mentioned to a coworker that, hey, I am deaf. Uh, I can't hear very well. Can you speak up? And she was like, what? You're, you're deaf? You don't look deaf. And I'm like, what are they supposed to look like? Point them out to me. She made a comment that why would you even bother studying so much when all you have to do is come back home and cook and take care of your kids and your husband. A lot of my formative years was spent trying to fit in and not stick out and um, prove that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm part of a group. If we have to overcome our stereotypes and unconscious bias, 
uh, we really need to be aware of what it truly means to be inclusive. To me, inclusion means that every team member feels respected and that their voice matters. Everyone is important. Everyone is valued. It's when people are free to be able to express themselves. You have to be able to listen to all the various points of views. And that leads again to new ideas. You see diversity every single day when you walk through those doors. That's important to me. I come from a different background, but I don't think of myself as different when I walk in. And if we all feel included and belong in a company. Once we listen to each other's story and find out where those stories come from, we have better chance to understand and work with each other. It's like talking to a family and we have debate and then eventually we make agreement and come on the same track. And together uh, we can create, co-create something beautiful. The good thing is that I walk a micro now, who didn't care how I look, they don't care how I talk, all they care is what I have to offer. I now feel comfortable bringing my authentic self to work. And I found that when I brought all of myself to work and not just a piece of myself or what I thought people wanted to see, that is when my career really took off. Instead of staying with the stereotype, we should challenge ourselves and ask ourselves, why do we think the way we do? And then talk to each other. Talking to each other helps us understand the differences, not see them as higher or lower value, but see them as differences that we can work with. It's going to take all of us working together to enable Micron to reach its highest potential. We are committed to ensuring that Micron is a place where every team member can walk in and be seen, heard, valued, and respected. We want to make sure that all different backgrounds, all different voices are really equal in terms of their representation here at Micron. Together, we can build a stronger, more inclusive company. Can you see my screen? Everyone, and if not, and Laurie, can I, Laura, can I turn it back over to you to bring back up the next slides? Okay, can you see my screen right I now? I see it is coming. Okay. I just see that Laura is presenting and that it, it is. Yes. So Mariana can black. see it. Here okay. it comes. There's the All video. All right, so I can't see it in the window anymore. I must have done it differently, but here's the video. Let me move forward. Whoops, there we go. Thank you. Perfect. So I want to leave you all today by talking about actions we can take as allies and some commitments we can enact to continue down this journey. My hope is that you can bring some of these ideas back to your workplace and build a community of allyship there too. The first is, um, next slide. The first action is to listen and to learn. So as I just said, you can um, watch that video I just shared from Micron on YouTube, but there are so many videos about different communities um, and TED Talks. I know that Procter & Gamble has done an amazing series on the Black experience and, and what it's like to have the talk with, with um, for Black parents to have the talk with their children. So I really encourage you to get out there and, and, um, and just watch and hear some of these stories. But also talk openly and honestly with your friends and loved ones in communities that are different from your own. I live in Boise, Idaho in the United States, where less than 1% of the population is Black. And I have a friend who's a veterinarian who recently hired a Black veterinarian to come and work at the clinic. And he wasn't sure if he should speak to this person about having a being a minority in Idaho. I told him, yes, that is exactly what you need to do. Have the conversation and ask them, what is it that you need to feel psychologically safe and welcome in this community? Because you're not going to know if you don't ask those questions. So have the conversation.
Integrate inclusive language into your regular conversations and professional interactions. Create social settings that are going to bring people together from different diverse backgrounds. And share, share things about you. Share your pronouns. Tell people about your diversity dimensions because when you reveal that about yourself and make yourself vulnerable, it's going to make them a lot more likely to um, share with you what their diversity dimensions are and, and help you be in a real authentic conversation and relationship. Speak up. Do not allow microaggressions to go unchecked. If you hear somebody who is making a disparaging joke or a disparaging statement, the easiest thing to do is to just say, I don't find that that is in line with our culture. You don't have to say any more than that, but um, it's very important to stop those kinds of um, a kind of language or those kinds of microaggressions in their tracks and let people know that, that, that it's not acceptable. And then show up. Just demonstrate your open support. You can display stickers, you can wear hats, you can wear t-shirts, you can volunteer and support those um, who are challenged and those communities who, who are challenged. And you can also celebrate with them, celebrate and attend their events when they're celebrating their community, but just keep showing up. But remember that the journey of allyship is also a long one. It is winding. It can be challenging and it can be frustrating. You will make mistakes and that's okay. Um, what you want to do though is keep at it. Don't give up because I know um, from talking to, to different friends and different underrepresented communities, they would so much rather have someone trying than to be silent. And, um, and they do appreciate um, that support. Another important thing to remember is that you may really be far along in your allyship journey in one community, but maybe not very far along in another community, and that's okay. Um, it's, it's constantly, you're constantly growing, we're constantly learning. Um, at Micron, a community that, a company that is committed to inclusion had a huge blind spot when it came to the AAPI community. And some members of that community in the US stood up and said, you're not paying attention. Our family, our friends, and ourselves in the in the places where we live are getting threats. Um, we have had a hor horrific experience during this pandemic. We want to talk about it. And they have um, pulled together and are creating a 10th ERG now at Micron for the AAPI community. But but it was a blind spot for us. So even, even if you have the best of intentions, you're not going to be perfect. We're all going to constantly be learning. Next slide. Every day we are learning new behaviors. We are learning unproductive behaviors due to our unconscious bias, but we are showing up and we are active allies. My hope is that our work is going to inspire you to create a culture of allies in your workplace too. So thank you and let me know if you have any questions. I know we're getting kind of tight on time. Excellent, so is this the last slide? That is the last slide. Okay, thank you perfect. so much, Laura. And um, any questions in the chat? I, we only have a couple of minutes left. Michelle, thank you. This was really enlightening. And I appreciate you coming back and, and, and working with this again so we could get this show. I appreciate that. I appreciate you making the time. I really do. Thank you so much. OK, then we're going to go ahead and end our session. And remember that the recording will be available um, and shortly after through here. So if you have somebody that you know of that you would like them to see this, spread the word because it's available. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. You too.